All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Kevin again here with Yerky Racing. We're back out in the garage today for another one. This time around, uh, forgive the mess because it's been a whirlwind of work going on. We got to get it all cleaned up. But we're building us a CNC plasma table based off of JD's garage plans. Uh, we've expanded it, made it a roughly four by four cut dimension. Added a second Y axis motor over on this side and a second gantry to it. Came back and uh, added this pretty sweet drag chain setup. Um, all that's working out pretty good so far. We've got it in motion. Okay, I'll do another video on that. But today is all about the pan. 52 by 49 is what I want to make the pan size to. So we've come up here, we've measured off back down this way to 54 inches uh, for this side. And then we're that side we have to cut to 57. So we're gonna go ahead now. We got the cut 60 from Prime Weld over here. If you follow along with the channel, you know a couple of weeks ago we picked this up. And uh, we've done a few things with it so far. Been really happy with it. Uh, we'll leave a discount code down in the description. You can go on there and save you a little bit of money if you're interested in picking up the Prime Weld stuff. Again, they came on as a sponsor for the channel. We got this TIG 225X a couple of years ago. And man, it's been awesome. So zero complaints there. Prime Weld kind of knocks it out the park. But anyway, we're going to get this thing fired up. That's enough talking. Let's jump right in, see if we can make some stuff happen. So we're just going to use this piece of angle that we have clamped on as a guide. We'll run the tip right beside it. We got the drag tip on the torch. So it should be pretty simple, straightforward cut. All right, guys, I really hope you're enjoying the video. Just want to take a second to invite you over to Yerkit Racing Spread Shop, where you can find all sorts of merchandise. You name it, it's probably in there. So go over, find you something you like. Every order you place on this site is greatly appreciated, and it really goes a long ways to make sure that we're able to continue to bring you the content just like this. All right, so we got it set up again. Like I said, this time we're going to do 57. And we're just going to make this second cut, and then that'll be the actual square size that we need our pan. Then we're going to have to come around and we're going to have to fold a two and a half inch lip. It'll be two and a half inches deep. All right, so we got our overall dimension laid out here and we got our corners marked at two and a half all the way around. So we should be pretty good. We just gotta get this thing into break and see if we can get it bent into shape. Welcome back to Kevin's Lick It and Stick It. <laughs> okay so we got our pan all made up and then last night my camera died so we had to go ahead and cut these pieces without the camera but we got these three strips which are going to be the holders for our slats on the table next step is going to be to come through we're going to mark out two inches the whole way down and we got to make a bunch of cuts in these things so the slats can sit them Okay, so we have two of the rails done to hold the slats. I'm gonna go ahead and do this last one. Uh, basically, I, I laid it all out two inches on center 
and now I'm just going to use this other rail as a reference so I don't have to go back and measure everything but just kind of trying to mark the center of each one of these all right now take this top rail off all right so now I've made this jig uh, been kind of getting a little burnt and used but that's fine so we made it for slides over there we just line up the center of the teeth with the center of the dots and uh, it gives us something that we can use the plasma torch inside of and get a consistent cut so it's just clamps on the back side like that lock this guy down the device all right so the next thing is like i said this just allows us a place to put the torch inside of and ride it all the way around the edges and we get a good consistent cut ground strap tilt oh, the machine seems to work a whole lot better if you actually do attach the ground so i recommend that All right, so you guys get the idea. Now we're just gonna loosen this, slide the whole assembly down, line it back up with the middle of the dots again. And once we're happy with it, lock it down. Oops. And we're good to roll again. Now we just have to repeat that same thing the whole way down the rail. All right guys, so we've got our slat rails in the pan, got them all stitched in, all three of them are ready to go. Uh, pretty happy with the way they turned out. So next thing we gotta do is jump back over there and start cutting some slats uh, to go in all these spots. I'm probably gonna have to end up coming back on these edges down here and put like one or two little spots to hold a, um, to hold a slat. But other than that, we should be in good shape. So we're gonna jump right over and start cutting them. First slat. See how this goes. All right, so we got everything situated, I think. I'm gonna attempt now to run the first job and just see how this thing goes. Hopefully, it'll go ahead and cut it. Let's we'll see what happens.
So everything's moving around like it's supposed to. All right, we're going hot. Let's see if it'll work. All right, so definitely not the cleanest cut. Uh, we got quite a bit of dross on it. It messed up a couple of times. We were trying to cut a one inch square with a half inch square inside. Um, so we didn't quite get what we were looking for out of it. But, um, you know, we got to tune it. That's all it is to it. We just got to tune it. So anyway, I'm going to catch you guys over on the next one where hopefully we'll have a lot cooler product coming off of this thing. Um, I think we can get it. We just got to, you know, get it dialed in. All right, catch you on the next one.